No. All right, this is a legit talk. And, like, basically what I perceive from a design standpoint of what is Overwatch's biggest issue. And the biggest issue is necessity. Basically, what I mean when I say necessity, what I mean is anytime you have to do something. Now, that could be because of a uh, map design. So, like, oh, you have to run Widow on Junkertown Point 1 or you lose. You have to. Um, or a hero is just overpowered. Uh, basically, a hero is a better pick than every other hero just because of their skill set. Uh, so we, we could say, hey, you know, Brigette or Doom right now. Uh, and that's not the case, but let's just say that is the case. Or composition, meaning the enemy has ran something specific and you have to do something. I.e., uh, they have a tracer, and the only way you can fight tracer is with Brigette. So that is what I would consider flaws of design because of necessity. Whenever you take away player's choice and you force them to do something one specific way, I think that's a failure of design. Uh, the whole point with all these heroes and all this creativeness is players should have a bunch of solutions for every single problem in the game. Uh, but because of necessity, uh, and this is the core design of Overwatch, uh, it, 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 you can't. So, basically... We kind of define necessity, basically what you have to do. Um, and the funny thing is, is this is the actual issue with Brigette. It's not that she's low skilled or anything like that, which we'll get to later. It's the fact that you have to fight goats with goats. The Blizzard developers have taken away any options we have for other answers away from us. So, when... Looking through all this, the, the problem is, is when I start writing, like, this issue gets a lot bigger. So you notice how I notice skill. And now, well, let me start over here. Uh, so people are like, no, this is, Brigette is, like, this is the straw that, that's breaking the camel's back. It's really showing, like, the poor design that Overwatch is. And I was like, no, 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 guys, we've seen this issue before. Uh, we've seen it a lot. Uh, we've seen it with Mercy meta. Basically, when Mercy was forced to be, you know, she was necessary. She was that strong. Uh, we've seen it with Dive, uh, different phases of Dive. And, of course, right now we've seen it with Goats. We've actually had this problem three times. It's just that we've, <laughs> with Brigette, it's so noticeable that it's it's becoming incredibly obvious. And the funny thing is, is uh, we could... Uh, at least... On my stream, we know exactly when this has happened. Actually, anyone in the community should know. Is that uh, this is when the hate for one tricks really starts happening. Is because when a meta happens, uh, you can easily, easily see what is not meta. So if you see if someone doing something differently and it doesn't work, that's what's going to stand out more than anything. Usually this happens with the case of one tricks. And that's why there gets a lot of one trick hate whenever we see these uh, metas. Uh, so whenever you see a witch hunt starting to go a little bit higher and higher, and you're like, man, there's a lot of witch hunt threads out recently. That is because of meta. Uh, people are really frustrated, and they're just really pissed off, and they're like, you know what it is? It's the one tricks. They're not playing the way they should play the game, which means you have to play one of these three comps uh, or lose. So my next bullet point here is uh, we have to stop pushing the issue um, with counters or with disadvantageous matchups or basically releasing a hero to deal with the current issues. All you do is kick the can down the road, right? Uh, so Tracer was an issue, and so was Genji for the longest time. So what do they do? They introduce heroes like Sombra, right? The hack abilities. They introduced Moira, uh, basically an, a way to hit evasive heroes, right, with our lock on attack. Uh, we see Doomfist, which basically... If, Doomfist hits them, they die. And then we've seen it, the final straw, which is Brigette, which kind of just says, F your entire concept with these heroes. It's not just the heroes themselves, it's the strategies that revolves around them as well. Uh, that's why Brigette really shuts down Dive. She shuts down every single part of it. Uh, so, if we introduce a new hero to deal with Brigette, it, it does nothing. In three months, we're going to be like, Wait a second, we have the same fucking issue. 
just a new hero. So we have to go back and retroactively start fixing all this stuff. Uh, and now that means people are going to be like, wait, 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 wait. You mean you got to nerf Tracer? We can't nerf Tracer because, you know, she takes skill. She should be better than him. And then I'm like, well, as far as game design is concerned, uh, what is skill? Uh, that, that's kind of what I got written over here. It's like, wh what really is skill? And why do I give a fuck? Like, all right, so player A says, this is hard. All right, player A may suck. What about player B? And he's like, player B's like, this is super easy. Uh, skill is so damn subjective that it doesn't give us a concrete way to analyze anything. So, personally, from my view on game development, when I talk about skill, what we talk about is consistency. And this is where things get a little bit more concrete. So, with consistency... We will, let's throw, throw this out there. Let's say we design Widow to have 100% hit rate. Right? 100% crit rate. She always hits the headshots. Uh, everyone can do it in the world. It's the easiest thing to do. All of a sudden, everyone can do it. Just because we thought it took skill before, does that mean we don't balance it? Right? That's kind of what uh, I want to, like a thought experiment right now. It's like, if Widow did manage if more people like let's say 50 percent of the community even 100 percent, whatever started hitting uh their headshots all the time well widow at that point would be overpowered right i guarantee the devs when they started with uh any hero they're just like how accurate should they be right a hundred percent here a hundred percent accuracy with 300 damage shot would not last in overwatch a month a week People would ban it, not ban it, but people would get on the forums and bitch and complain and stop playing the game until it was nerfed. Uh, so it's like, okay, well, if it's not 100%, what is it? What was it designed for? And let's say it was designed for 25%. Okay. Well, players keep getting better. What worked at first in design are now is now basically... If we design Widow to have a 25% hit rate max, that's kind of what we're, we're, we're aiming towards. If people get good, because as the game goes on and on and on, people will get better. This means the consistency of the hero is going to be more than what we designed for. And you would have to balance the game, right? Because it's becoming out of spec. Uh, which creates this, uh, I call it just a balance paradox. Because people ask me, they're like, Crow, do you think you're the best person in Overwatch? I'm like, no. Like, who is the best person in Overwatch? I'm like, no one. They all suck. Like, everyone sucks. Uh, all the Koreans, all the Americans, any Overwatch League player, they are absolute dog shit at Overwatch. And the reason why I can say that is, in five years, we're going to look at the way we play the game now and just go, we're so fucking dumb. Why, why did we even play that way? Like, wh why did we play that way? And we're going to be so much better, you know, in the future. Uh, if you look at stuff like Brood War, the meta is still developing. People are still getting better and better and better. Now, Brood War is basically the pinnacle of balance, so uh, it, it's really hard to pull off. There's different strategies, and there's a lot of different ways to deal with things uh, in the game. There's a lot of primary metas, but overall, new strategies are coming out, which is pretty amazing for, like, a 20-year-old game. And now... And here's what I call the balance paradox, is I've always been a long-term believer to balance for the highest levels. Uh, the reason for that is you can't design something for someone who uses it improperly. Like, I don't know, like you design this marker, and I'm like, marker doesn't work. And they're like, take off the cap. I'm like, yeah, the, the marker doesn't work, right? You, you can't design a, a tool so well that I cannot use it improperly. So the idea is you can't design Widowmaker or Junkrat, or Winston, or Reinhardt, in such a way that you'll balance it for all levels. It's physically, or just, not physically possible, it's just, it's impossible. You're, someone's always going to fuck it up. Oh, there's a, I saw something on my whiteboard, it's a treasure chest on my stream. I was like, what the hell, did I break something? Uh, so, here comes the paradox, which is, well, how do we balance a game for the highest skill level, if the highest skill level is also increasing. 
And this kind of stumped me personally, because I was like, oh yeah, you always balance for this highest skill level. Like, you always balance for, like, let's just say 90% hit rate. You balance for this. And then all of a sudden, people are at, like, you know, 97%. And I'm like, shit, uh, well, how can we balance for this if this is the new highest skill level? And I think it's going to be the case with all modern games forever. Uh, at least the competitive ones, is that you will have to have ongoing balance to everything. Uh, it doesn't matter if a hero is skilled or not. It doesn't matter, like, oh, Widow is a skillful hero and you should be rewarded. I go, no, 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 no. You're not entitled to win the game just because you're good with Widow. Uh, what really matters is the game as a whole and the balance as a whole. And Widow is going from what we plan for a 25% hit rate up to let's say a 40% hit rate uh, we have to do something because Overwatch was not designed to deal with this uh, is that punishing and people would say well that's punishing players that are just good and I'm like well to a certain extent you kind of have to um, what they do get out of it instead of being able to single handedly destroy a team is that if you're good enough with Widow that is now part of your skill set and is now part of your strategy subset which means, in a competitive game, if I can run 10 strategies and my enemy can only run 2, that does give me some sort of edge. So I know a lot of people are saying we shouldn't punish people that are just too good with the class, but that's why nerfs happen. That's why Doomfist nerfs are coming out, that's why Brigette nerfs are coming out. Whether you agree if either of those heroes take skill or not, is the point is moot. It's the fact that you do have to bring them down to within consistency of design. You have to bring them within scope. So that's the kind of little bar balance paradox, and the only way to solve it that I've thought about so far is just constantly uh, balancing game over time. I'm not saying every two weeks, but I am saying every year it is going to have to... Things will have to happen to bring everything within everyone's skill set, because it's constantly going up. And you may not know it, but you are getting better. The problem is, is everyone's getting better at once, so it's hard to see that um, when you're in your daily practice. Uh, it's actually a really big issue. Uh, I've been a lifelong martial artist, and there's a lot of students in, not I was, I'll say my class, but I'm not the teacher uh, yet. Uh, but a lot of students, especially the newer ones, like they've been around for three, four years, they actually get pretty demoralized when they're like, man, like, pro, I keep going up against you, and I just, like, I, I can't beat you. And I'm like, well, well, yeah, idiot. Like, I'm practicing too. We're, we're both practicing together we're both going like this like if i start to slack then you'll catch up if, if, if you start doing you know for whatever reason if you like just start really learning things well then, then you'll catch up like, these things will happen but because we're all learning together it's uh it's very difficult to see this so this is happening right now this is bound to happen where people are getting better and we will have to bring things within the original design scope uh of balance and believe it or not, this is what happened to Junkrat. Is that I guarantee Junkrat was spec for like a 25% hit rate. And all of a sudden he was getting up 35-40%. And they're just like, this hero was not designed to dish out this type of damage consistent. We actually have to bring him down within the design scope. Um, a little bit of talk about reality on this one. Is that in the NBA and the MLB, you can't see it. Uh, NBA and MLB. I don't know if anyone, I don't know how many, I have foreign viewers or how many uh, American viewers I got, but the National Bas Basketball Association and the Major League Baseball Association, um, they're actually having issues as well. And those that don't know it, uh, this year, I believe, in baseball was the first year that there's been more strikeouts than hits. Uh, same thing in the NBA. There's been more three-pointers this year than any other year um, on record. And it's actually three-pointers are now outscoring, I believe, field goals is what it is. Uh, so they're having their own issues because people are getting so skilled at these sports. And these are established sports, guys. These are decades and decades and decades of established sports that are coming into basically, quote-unquote, balance issues because people are getting so goddamn good at the game. They're getting that good that they have to make changes. And I guarantee within the next five to ten years, you will see changes in these two associations. Uh, because of that. Uh, so, uh, from there, like, we kind of talked about skill, and 
it, basically skill is the one reason why a lot of people don't want to nerf specific heroes. Let's say Tracer, Genji, Widow, Hanzo. Uh, these heroes are seen as skillful, but we don't care about skill. We care about consistency. Now, the paradox with skill that I've always had in Overwatch is on this side. Uh, when we say counter, and anyone in my chat knows I hate the word counter because uh, it invokes just a feeling in the human mind, at least in the English language, uh, that it means you've gotten nothing, I've gotten everything, and it's end of story. When someone's like, oh, I got countered, it means you completely lost, which is not the case. Um... I guess what in the Overwatch League community or the Overwatch community or just the normal video game community, people would consider this hard counters. Uh, and then they consider soft counters just things that are... McCree's good at mid-range, Junkrat's bad. It's not a counter, it's just that's where they're, you know, they're designed to be strong and not strong at. So it just, just so happens that, you know, this is where Junkrat's a little bit weak. He's going to have an issue, but you can get over it with skill. Uh, people would consider that a soft counter. Now, I don't believe in any of that shit because of what I just said. I believe counters is a shit word. Uh, you have disadvantageous matchups or difficult matchups, which means you're not good enough in that matchup, which means you got to get skillful. I'm all about skill in this type of scenario. Uh, I believe people can overcome their tough matchups, and in the end, when you watch Overwatch League, you will see people that play Tracer into Brigette, and they will win. Uh, they will overcome this big issue. Uh, but the funny thing is, is about counters, a counter is an inherent advantage one hero has over another. So what does that mean? Well, it, it means you didn't do anything, right? You, you just picked a class. Uh, it actually took no skill for you to do what you did, but now you have the advantage. So instead of saying, uh, basic counter is a... a a skill, a skillless action. Uh, so for all this praise about skill and consistency and all this stuff, um, you will see the same people that say skill, 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 but then come over here and say, no, 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 you need to understand how to counter, counter, counter. And you're like, wait a second, you're praising skill, but then you're also praising the skilllessness of it as well. Uh, which is kind of, I, I just I just throw this down here, like the, the, the counter paradox is that uh, you cannot value skill, what did I say, you cannot value skill, but demand counter options. Uh, they kind of contradict themselves. Uh, th that's all there is. Uh, so it it's really weird that people just value skill and then they... Absolutely don't. When people say it takes skill to counter, not really. In fact, if you look at Overwatch and how it's designed, uh, all counters are by a a lesser, what is kill, considered a lesser skill activity. So, if you do Junkrat versus Pharah, Pharah has the clear advantage. It's an easier way, it's easier to play Pharah against the Junkrat, Right? She has the mechanical uh, advantage of flight. Uh, Winston against Genji. It's not really a counter, but Winston has the advantage because Genji's an evasion-based tank, or evasion-based hero, and Winston has an auto-aim ability, right? The auto-aim ability takes less skill than it does the Genji. Uh, McCree stun when compared to Tracer, right? It takes more skill uh, to play Tracer than it is to stun and headshot a Tracer. That's how counters work, is that something has the advantage. And if it didn't have the advantage naturally, it wouldn't be a counter. Uh, you can't... That, that That's why you can't both say counter taking skill, and it doesn't. It, it just, to have the natural advantage is a skillless motion, and that's what gives you the advantage, is that it's inherent. Uh, so that's that whole paradox. So it, it, this all comes from... This idea of necessity. And that's the core issue with Overwatch. Is that because we're allowing people, or we're forcing necessity, saying, if you go X, then someone else has to go Y. 
If someone goes B, you have to go C. If someone does X, you know, you're basically forcing people's hand to do something. And whenever you remove choice from the player's, uh, if you remove choice from the player, I I would consider it poor design. Um, the people are saying, but it takes skill to like flashbang a tracer. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying it's a lot easier to flashbang a tracer and killer than it is for the tracer to win the matchup against. It's just a natural advantage. It's not an I win button. That's what people consider a hard counter, but I don't really, again, believe in that. Uh, yeah, so it all comes back to this necessity. If you have to, basically, if anyone ever says, oh, someone has X, then, they, then we gotta go Y, I believe that's the design flaw. And the only way to get rid of this necessity, which also will help with the meta and actually not get rid of one tricks but make them more acceptable is to properly balance the game you have to you have to balance the game at the root uh root i should say sorry uh at, at, at the root uh, and you can't let any of this stuff get in the way uh, that's we have to get away from this. so you, you have to get away of saying oh if they got a Tracer, it's okay if Tracer can kill the entire team because someone else is this. Because that's just delaying the problem. Uh, we have to go back to the beginning. Not start fresh, but start balancing correctly. Because if we keep doing this kick the can game where we keep balancing heroes with other heroes, uh, in a couple years, I think we're going to get to this monstrosity where if you take one piece out of this janky-ass Jenga puzzle, the whole thing's going to come crashing down. Uh... And that's my biggest worry is that if we kind of design ourselves into a into a, a corner really and I see a lot of people complaining about skill and when I say skillless I don't mean skillless I understand that some things take skill but I'm just saying it's easier for one hero over the other uh, else you wouldn't consider it a counter you, you you can't consider something a counter if it doesn't have a natural advantage over it. Uh, and I think that's, like, the majority of it. The only other things I really have is that niche heroes um, are actually a flawed design. And I've talked about this in my chat a bit. Uh, why do I believe they're a flawed design? Well, there's too many ways to attack a map. Also, if a niche hero only excels at one point, again, that's a necessity, and we need to get rid of that. Uh, but niche heroes, like... Why would I use a hero that's good 50% of the time... Or that requires absolute high amount of teamwork. If I can just pick another hero that doesn't. Uh, we need to get rid of these niche heroes. And we need to bring them more into the usable everywhere type deal. Uh, if this happens. Then we'll have more options to fight the main metas. Uh, currently because of necessity. Overwatch or Blizzard has taken away our tools to be creative. To be able to do random ass stuff with. Uh, to come up with something truly unique to fight some of these metas. As long as the heroes that are part of these are always strong and will always be stronger in more situations than every other hero in the game. We will we will keep on having this issue. We will keep having this discussion every year. Just every, every, every goddamn year. Uh, like I said, we, we've seen it multiple upon multiple times. Three times now, at least, that we've seen it in a in a really bad state. The, the Mercy meta, the Dive meta, the Goats meta. Um, the minor metas, like, if you would consider... I call it Beyblade, but most people call it... Or the Beyblade, yeah, I call it Pinwheel. I, I'm too old, and I wasn't into that stuff. Uh, that was up for a little bit. Triple Tank was around for a little bit. Uh, Double Sniper was around for a little bit before Goats, and then people were just like, well... You know, we got we got to deal with that. Uh, you know, they they basically needed enough tanks so that they didn't die to one shots, but then still provide enough damage. Goats is actually the result of that. Um, so what is my opinion in the difference between niche heroes and non optimal? Uh, I don't believe there is such a difference. I believe niche heroes are suboptimal because they're only good in certain situations. In which case, I would want a hero that's more useful in, in, in more situations. Uh, 
The other issue is if you do also believe in counters and the counter based system, basically the necessity idea that Overwatch is built upon, uh, the defense should actually always lose. Because if you go out, you scout it, see what the composition is, have a counter comp, win the point, defense changes, send another scout, find out what they're running, build a counter comp, win that point again. Uh, and the way that they basically, if there were niche heroes, if there were more niche heroes in the game, that's actually what would happen. And that's why we see a lot of general heroes still being played. Uh, it's just because you need to be good in op more situations than fewer. Uh, being versatile is a very strong advantage for more for most of the heroes. That's why mobility is so strong. People saying the meta is going to vary between patches and hero release. The problem is, is the meta really shouldn't change great. Um, my one note here is Jeff Kaplan said two things. He actually said the for Doomfist and Brigette, uh, he said he's like, look, the new hero is going to be meta changing. And, and you understand that for something to be meta changing, it doesn't. It's not just that it shuts down one hero, it shuts down an entire composition. Which means, if he is right, and a hero is meta-changing, then it's going to be overpowered, because it doesn't just beat one hero, it beats five to six, or four to six, whatever makes the core concept of that meta. Uh, he said the same thing about Doomfist, but Doomfist, back in the day, was garbage. Uh, he's significantly... He's significantly good, as everyone has figured out about Uh, and that's about it. I mean, the biggest uh, arguments against this concept and biggest flaws I see with it is, one, why should someone learn a higher skilled hero if you don't, if you don't get rewarded for it? Basically, why should I learn Widow if I can't kill an entire team? Well, it's because you'll get that within your skill set and your team will have more strategies to you. That's why it's there. Uh, I don't believe you should be entitled to kill an entire team just because you're quote unquote good. The idea is to have a balanced game. And if we had a balanced game, you'll see what a lot of people are complaining about right now. is just like, I feel like I don't have an effect on the game because it's a team-based game. Uh, if it's more balanced, then you would. Every hero would have... The DPSers would have less of an effect, but you would see supports and takes having more of an effect if it was more and more balanced. Uh, everything would come to, like, everyone can feel like they're doing something positive for the team. Uh... One tricks essentially would be more accepted because right now everyone says they hate one tricks, but the truth is they hate off meta one tricks. Uh, like you'll see ML7, I believe his name is, the Ana, who's incredibly good. Any pro that's playing his signature hero, he can play it all the time on ladder and no one's going to complain. Uh, it's all about that hero being accepted, so it's more about off meta than that. Uh, also, it'll get rid of, if again, properly balanced, we have more tools for combat the meta, at least more options. That stuff. It's all about getting rid of necessity um, from a hero balance perspective, and it's going to come up sooner or later, but from a map, map perspective as well. Uh, so, that. Oh, and the other one is actually one of the devs. I believe Jeff Kaplan said this as well, and it's. I understand where he's getting at, but I don't like the way he said it. Uh, what he said was that he didn't mind that Dive was a really strong meta because there will always be a best strategy in Overwatch. So he's like, we don't we don't want to change things just because there's a best strategy. There will always be a best strategy when looking at the highest level. And he kind of uses that as an excuse to not balance the game. And like, I get... He is right. There is always going to be a best strategy there's always going to be a strategy that's better than everything else but that doesn't mean we can't like minimize the gap between other strategies and the best strategies uh we want to balance to get to the to be more ideal do i think they'll make map changes in the future they will have to Uh, that's basically it. I mean, I can look over my notes. Uh, necessity is why people are upset. Talk about counters. 
Nine skilled wins. This is the natural advantage that you're uh, taking advantage of, which is a which isn't a bad thing. It's just that don't praise skill if you have the you know the advantage. It's like kicking a puppy. I'm so skilled, I can kick really good. I can kick this puppy so damn well. Yeah, man, but you get a size advantage. Try to kick a wolf. See what happens. Overall, we need to stop running away from nerfing certain heroes and claiming that heroes require skill should not be touched. Uh, if that was the case, why was Widow nerfed during Season 1? Basically, she required a high amount of skill then, but, but she should, so she shouldn't have been able to touch according to everyone else's standards. Uh, the truth was, she needed to. How do you propose Blizzard tries to reach a balanced state? Like, what needs changing? So... Brigette exists because of Tracer and Genji. So you gotta balance Tracer and Genji. In fact, if anyone says Tracer and Genji are not an issue, the truth is, is they are because they literally designed like fucking five heroes to destroy these heroes and they're still good. Uh, if you nerf Tracer Genji, then we can really... I think you could redesign Brigette to not be as strong as she is. You could make a sword shield, sword base, whatever type hero, but you can definitely lower the fact that they can just shut someone down incredibly hard. Um, but then that will go lead to the sniper meta. So we have Widow Hanzo. Uh, basically, snipers right now have everything for DPSers. If it wasn't for goats and just getting on someone and killing them, uh, these heroes will be played because we did see between basically dive and goats, uh, we were running double sniper a lot. Basically, these snipers have mobility, they have a health pool, they have damage, and their damage is with no fall off, and there is no risk of engagement. Meaning, like Doomfist at least has to go in, Roadhog has to go within 20 meters, other heroes have to get in closer, these heroes risk nothing. Uh, and then the actual, and then if these get nerfed, we'll have to go back against Dive. And the truth is, is we need to nerf Diva in Winston. And I'm not saying these heroes need to be trash, but they just need to be brought in line with every other hero. Uh, uh, Diva's the big one. People are like, wait, 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 you can't nerf Winston. I'm not, I'm not saying like nerf him hard, but like basically make his shield 25% larger, the bubble size. Uh, I think that would be more than sufficient. Widow Hanzo, they basically, we have to pick as a community what is the purpose of snipers and what do we have to take away from them. Uh, again, not huge changes. I know people don't want to lose the one shot from these uh, heroes because that's a big part of their identity, which is cool. So that means we have to attack it in other ways. We have to see what we want added from the sniper. What strategies do we kind of want snipers to exhibit? Uh, stuff like that. It, we really do need to have really big discussions. The problem is, is we don't know Blizzard's true intentions for everything and how they feel about certain heroes and what they believe certain heroes are meant to do. Uh, that's the biggest thing that we have to guess on. Like, why did they release four or five heroes to beat Tracer Genji instead of nerfing Tracer Genji? I can't answer. I can't answer. Either because of marketing, maybe they do think they're balanced, but you wouldn't release five heroes to try to stop these two if you thought they were balanced. Uh, there's something, there's something Blizzard is holding on to that I can't speak for, but we have to find out what the real cause is. Uh, basically, if you balance these six heroes, I think more options would exist in the game. I believe these strategies, I don't want metas to go away, and I don't want metas to be easily countered. Uh, I want there to be different strategies that work against these and work for them, and I want it to come down to skill more than anything. I don't want it, and I don't want it to be like a mirror matchup. I get it that people are like, well, in a mirror matchup, there's very intricate small details, and I get it. That's cool. I love it. But man, I hate seeing the same six heroes every single game. Uh, and the problem is it's balance. So... 
I think if you modified these heroes, that would be a big start, and I think it would fix a lot of the issues. A lot of people would calm down. I think a lot of one trick hate would go away. I believe this push for pugs would go away, and that's not a bad thing or a good thing. It just I think this necessity that everyone's pushing for, like a higher caliber ladder and all of that, would all actually go away if people just calm down and, and they had a reasonable amount of choices. Because uh, when choices are stripped away, that's when we see we, we really see people get pissed off. Um, I mean, there's still a lot of other things I'd like to change with the game. I would like to change armor. Uh, I think there's some big overarching topics that people at Blizzard could address. Uh, I think overtime's one of them. Uh, the armor system needs to, I think, change. And unless they go something big, like they really make it into an MMO, we're like, oh, these are now flankers. And flankers take extra damage from explosions. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless they do something crazy-ass like that that I can't predict. Um, what do I think about the ban system? I don't like the ban system because you just kind of ban and you just run the same strategy over and over. You basically brand Brigette and run Dive. And if they... I think there's more than enough heroes in the pool right now to always run Dive. Uh, and I think the one... I will give the that ban idea one good thing is that if you ban... It, it allows players to control if they believe... If the community as a whole believes a hero is overpowered. Basically, if you look at Smash and Meta Knight, they're just like, the hero can't be, that we, we can't have the hero, he's too good. Right, they just kind of, they put him aside, they're like, this is the game we have, and I, as a community, that'd be nice if we had that ability to control that. But I don't see banning heroes as anything that's long-term going to fix things, because of the kicking the can issue. Basically, oh, we'll ban this hero, alright, great, you just, you ban an overpowered hero, now you got another overpowered hero. Like, you're just pushing it down the road instead of fixing the actual issue. Yeah, so it's, I'm, I'm more about fixing the issue. I get people want to make these cool systems, and they're like, oh, other games ban. It's like, well, if the games were balanced, you actually wouldn't need a ban system. Outside of taking the enemy out of their comfort zone. That's another thing. Uh, that is, uh, you know, a different type of strategy. Like, if there were bans, I guarantee every game, everyone would ban Junkrat. Guarantee it. Would I pick up another hero? Yeah, I'd be fine. Um, but, again, would that help the game as a whole? Not really. We really have to take this necessity deal that's built into Overwatch, because Overwatch is built around the concept of countering and switching uh, because of these necessities. They're like, oh, we want someone to run a Genji, and then someone has to run a McCree, and then someone has to run X, and then someone has to run Y, and it's this big chain. And all these decisions are basically imposed on you because you have to do them because we made the hero so strong except for one hero that's you know, really good against it. Um, what Overwatch needs to come to when it comes to hero design is... Basically what Ash is like, where they just made a hero. Take all the other heroes out of the pool. Don't even think about any other heroes and just make a hero. They're like, you know what? I want I want to make just a western girl that throws dynamite and shit. People are like, yeah, let's do that. And then see how it incorporates itself into the game. I think that's the correct way to go forward. Um, because that's what makes a lot of MMOs really, really unique. Let's talk about Dota too, because I, I, I at least know about Dota. Is when they release a new hero, they're not going to go, oh, you know what's really strong in the meta? X. You know what, let's release Y so it counters them. Uh, they don't do that. They're like, you know what would be a cool idea? Let's just have a, a fucking monkey that jumps from tree to tree. Man, that, that wouldn't that be sweet? You jump out of the tree and stun people? And it's like, alright, cool. Now you got a unique hero that people have to figure out to use creatively and then use that into the meta. Uh, it's really upsetting when Blizzard just keeps on giving us the same shape puzzle piece and we're like, oh, gotta use it this way. Gotta use it this way, gotta use it this way. Um, creativity and choice is number one when you have a game like this, and that's been stripped away. It's just been stripped. Uh, forced. 
people, uh, I'm assuming people want to ask, like, what do you mean you wanted to change the armor system? Armor system, I think, should be, like, minus 10 damage. Uh, anything under 10 damage gets reduced uh, by 5, just like the current system. Uh, from there, uh, you make armor take damage away before um, the headshot. So if you get headshot right now, Lacree does 70 damage. If you headshot, it is 140. But if you headshot against armor, you do 70, and armor goes, oh, I'll take away 5 damage from the total. Uh, the 5 damage should be taken away here, which would be 65. And then all of a sudden, this goes down to 130. Uh, that's what I would like about that. Uh, I think this this would be a big change. Uh, from here, what you do is you start adding small amounts of armor to specific heroes. So like May, uh, Junkrat, Torb. Um, mainly projectile-based heroes. And it would give them one extra shot against hit scans to actually be on an even playing field. That's how I would move that. Uh, yeah. Also, any type of feast or famine here, I'd get rid of, redesign them. So, like Pharaoh. Pharaoh would be an actually easy fix. Just give her um. A new ability. Give her 100 health, 100 armor. Uh, take her ability to regen flight and or fuel in the air away. But uh, give her a third ability that allows her to regen the 100 armor over like a second or two. And then lower down her jump jet cooldown by two seconds. Bastion. Bastion's a tough case because Bastion, the strongest ability in any game is mobility because you get to choose where your battles are at. Um... So the question is, is when you take that away from someone, how do you balance them? How much power do you give them? You give them too much power? And actually, balance, Bastion is the hardest character in the game to balance. You give him too much power, he's going to get mercy boosted, put three shields in front of him, and he's going to kill everyone. Make him too weak, no one uses him. Uh, Bastion's actually a really easy fix in my mind. Uh, you make turret form uh, an ability. It lasts for six seconds. It goes on cooldown for 12 seconds after that. But you give his turret plus 20... I'd say like plus 10 to 15% damage, but allow it to headshot. Basically, the idea is... Uh, you want... Instead of just having a hero that's like good all the time, you kind of want a hero that you can play around with. Uh, that you have peaks and valleys. So like with Bastion and... and uh, if, he, if his turret form was you know good and bad... Uh, or on cooldown and not off cooldown, then you're like, alright, I got a moment of weakness, I can play against this. Uh, it allows more positioning-based answers, and that's actually the biggest... I should have said this way, because no one, when I put this on YouTube, no one's going to fucking last this long. Uh, we need more positional-based strategies uh, and answers to different metas. Basically, we need, we need something that allows us to play around these metas with position. But yeah. Yeah, but sentry a bit. Yeah, you would. But that those are the ideas. The main thing is not so much what I would do for each hero. It's more about, as a community, we have to start talking about this idea of necessity and how it's based on this idea of counters and how to remove it. That's what it comes to. Uh, anyone, if people disagree with me, at least we can start talking about it more. Uh, but this is it. Whenever you hear people bitch about Overwatch in the future, just think about this, and you'll be like, are they just bitching because they don't have an option? The answer's probably going to be yes. So are there any questions? Any questions? I think I kind of described whatever I wanted. Stuff like that. 